All right, in this video, we're gonna show you how to turn a fraction into a percent, but we're not going to do that old uh, divide the numerator by the denominator and then move the decimal two places over. Why? Because that doesn't make sense. We don't know why that works. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to convert a fraction into a percent in a way that makes sense. All right, so what we're gonna do, all right, let's say we got five eighths. Now just let's get, get the, let the cat out of the bag, let's get, uh, lay the cards on our table, let's just let out the, the bad news. Now, the, we know what we used to teach. We used to teach five divided by eight. Now, first off, it was always a crapshoot as to whether the kids wrote the numbers in the right spots when you have your fraction and then uh, you have to turn it into that division symbol and all that sort of stuff. And uh, we have a bazillion mnemonics for how to remember that the top number goes inside. Oh, the top dog always gets into the house and the bottom dog is left locked outside. <laughs> That's one way. I heard a new one just recently. Uh, the cowboy rides the horse. And so the cowboy goes in the house and of course the horse stays outside. <laughs> so cowboy rides the horse. Cowboy goes inside and the horse is left outside. Whatever. Okay, so these are all mnemonics. And, and then, but that, they really still just hide the, the, un, the greater understanding of why does this work? So we know eight does not go into five. So you got to put a decimal and you got to do some zeros. Eight goes into 46 times. So that's 48. You got two left over. You drop the zero. Eight goes into 22 times. So that's 16. You got four left over. You drop the zero. Eight goes into 45 times. So that's 40. Uh, we have nothing left over. So now we know that our decimal is 0 0.625. But then uh, we move the decimal over two places, and that's how we get that the answer is 62.5%. So it's so many things going on with this. First off, it's all mathematically correct, but really the question is, okay, why do we divide? What's the importance of this decimal? How is this decimal connected to a percent? Why? What makes sense of that? Why do we move two places over? We know it's because it's percent per hundred. We know that that hundred, ha there's just so many black boxes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a, a, a nice visual representation. Here it is. My visual representation is I'm going to give students a tape diagram cut into eighths. I'm gonna tell them that this diagram the entirety of the diagram represents 100%. Given that piece of information that the entire tape represents 100%, I want to know what percent is these five pieces? What percent do these five pieces represent? All right. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let my students think. I'm going to let them argue. I'm going to let them ponder, and I'm just going to watch the, the beautiful math happen. All right. Now, what are some things that a student might do? Well, uh, a student might say, well, I know that all eight pieces equals 100%. So if I do 100 divided by 8, yeah, they're still dividing like they divided up here. The difference, however, is they know why they're dividing. They're dividing by 8, 100 divided by 8, not 5 divided by 8, because they want to find the value of each individual piece. So if I divide 100 divided by 8, I'm going to drop that 0. 8 goes into 20. 2 times, that's 16 with 4 left over. I'm going to add a decimal, drop the 0. 8 goes into 45 times, so I get 12 and a half. What does that 12 and a half mean? Well, that 12 and a half means that each piece represents 12 and a half percent. So each piece 
represents 12 and a half percent. And then, of course, what would the student do? Now the student would say, well, but I want five of them. So I'm going to do that 12.5 and I might add them five times or I might multiply them by five, in which case 12, 2, carry, and I get 62.5%, in which case the answer is 62.5%, 62.5%. In this case, we've converted a fraction into a percent in a way that makes sense, where every calculation has a reason and a purpose. Moreover, it's a reason and a purpose that the students understand. All right. Now, ultimately, what are we doing? Ultimately, we, let's see, we, we took 100, we divided by 8, and then we times by 5, didn't we? So we could use a little bit of kind of like commutative property, and we can take that and say, well, if I take the divide by 8 and the times by 5, because if I divide by 8 then times by 5, I'm going to get the same answer as if I times by 5 and then divide by 8. So now we end up with 100 times 5 divided by 8, but we know that five, oopsies, that we know that five divided by eight, another way to write five divided by eight is five eighths times a hundred. Oh, look at that. So if I want to find, to convert a fraction into a percent, all I have to do is take that fraction and multiply by a hundred. So 5 eighths times 100 is times 100 over 1, which gives me 500 divided by 8. And there we go. And by the way, check this out. So we, let's see, we took the 5 divided by 8, and then we times by 100, didn't we? 5 divided by 8 times by 100. And if we go up to that kind of that standard trick that we teach, what did we do? We did 5 divided by 8, and then we times by 100. So now it makes sense. So if our students want to do this method, they can because it makes sense. Because they know 5 divided by 8 times 100 is really the same thing as first, I'm going to do 100 divided by 8 to get the value of each piece. Then I'm going to times by 5 to give me the, the percent of the five shaded pieces, which can be renamed as 5 eighths times 100, which really is just 5 eighths times 100. You get is equal to 500 over 8. Let me finish my thinking here. And then 8 divides into 500 62.5 times, which is 62 and a half percent. Folks, when we do math, we want the math to make sense. Sometimes for it to make sense, we have to do something other than the standard algorithm so that it makes sense, so that we can return to that standard algorithm, which generally it's, it's the most efficient, but it doesn't always make sense. That's why it's efficient. It's because it, it takes away all of the sense making and it just makes it efficient. So now sometimes we have to take a step back do some math that isn't the standard algorithm so it makes sense on our journey back to the standard algorithm.